I'll introduce how we're bringing bioinformatics to Google. Um, so uh, Google has this program called the Google Summer of Code, which is a great way to encourage students to participate in open source software development. The URL here is here at the bottom. Uh, the program just finished this year. It runs every year. It's been running for the last seven years. Uh, and some 7,000 students have gone through the program. I think this year with those just over 1,200 students from 69 countries worldwide and about 180 different organizations were participating. Um, the motivation really behind this program is that it pr provides an opportunity for students to work in software development related to their academic pursuits. Um, it gives them an opportunity to be exposed to real-world software development. Uh, it's not just academic projects that are involved in Google Summer of Code, it's real-world computing. So there's distributed development, software licensing, usability testing, and even some of the kind of more kind of social aspects of uh, software development, things like list, uh, mailing list etiquette as well. So it's a good thing to learn about. Uh, organizations benefit from the fact that we get more open source code. Uh, and then again, one of the requisites of this program is that all that code's released at the end of it. So again, the community benefits from that as well. Um, and as well, it helps us to identify new developers and committers to our projects uh, through the recruitment of students or through interactions with other uh, mentoring organizations. There is also a global outreach. I mean, there's a good public good to this, but it's not just for Google. I mean, Google, obviously, they're providing a lot of the infrastructure and the funding for this. But as well, the mentoring organizations get a, a huge boost from this, uh, this great project. Um, so what Google does is it brings all of these different organizations together, a um, variety of different types of technologies, uh, content management operating systems, databases, languages, compilers, and then some kind of real world situations like government, education, entertainment, and science relating to health and biology particularly. Um, now, this year there was eight uh, bioinformatics organizations. It's probably the biggest number so far in the last seven years, uh, covering areas of general bioinformatics software development uh, to network biology, crowdsourcing, uh, biomedical, neuroinformatic, and genome informatics, evolutionary biology. So it's a great opportunity for students that are interested in bioinformatics to participate in kind of these kind of hack-like hack uh, projects or to contributing towards uh, very well-developed projects. The Genome Informatics Project, which I represent, is an umbrella organization. We've been going for, I've been managing that for the last two, and I've actually been mentoring with Google Summer of Code for the last three years. Um, so we have a variety of other kind of smaller projects, or some may actually look at them as larger uh, projects, contributing to uh, Google Summer of Code. So we have Galaxy. Uh, there's the genome browsers like uh, GBrowse, JBrowse. There's the generic model organism database, and some of the databases associated with that, like Port Echo, which is a biology of uh, E. coli biology database, uh, WormBase, which is the C. elegans uh, biology database. And as well, there's uh, React Home, which is the manually curated database that I represent. Uh, so typically, over the last couple of years, we've had about three or four students participating in developing uh, tools for some of these resources. And in the next slide, I'll tell you how Google actually uh, administers and how we administer this, this project. Uh, so we have a website uh, through the Gmod website uh, that provides a link to all the ideas and interesting projects that we have each year. Uh, this encourages students to kind of go to this website, look at the projects, think about what they'd like to work on. Of course, students can present their own ideas to us, and we can uh, certainly uh, help them with them. Um, Google provides this kind of uh, administrative interface where the mentors. Yes. Uh, you speak to me. Okay. Um, and actually, there are people who want to speak to me about it. So uh, it can actually be any size. Um, there are large monolithic projects there as well, the, like MySQL. Uh, so, sorry, it is. Sorry. No, Cytoscape, if we go back, one slide is the National Resource for Network Biology. So this was actually the first group that we belonged to. And then we broke off because we felt we had other genome interests, which probably are not necessarily reflected well by just focusing on network biology. Um, 
So um, Google provides this website where the mentors and the students can interact with and all these mentoring organizations um, participate. So what's, what happens initially is there's a timeline. It's kind of short, a matter of five months, starts in March and it ends in the fall. Uh, so Google makes their announcement for uh, GSOC uh, way back in March. And at this point, uh, people, the mentoring organizations that are interested in participating, submit applications to Google. If you're accepted, you can then open, the kind of floodgate opens for students to start emailing you about interesting projects. Uh, typically, we have about 10 ideas a year, and we have somewhere in the order of 40 to 50 students that kind of email us. We kind of filter through that list, um, and then we're left with you know, three or four good proposals that we submit to Google. If they're accepted, there's a kind of community bonding step where the mentor and the students interact. And then the coding starts in the summer term. After about five weeks, we have the first midterm evaluation uh, just to assess how the mentors and the students are working together. And if everything is good and passed, we kind of proceed for another five weeks of development. And then there's a final evaluation uh, towards the end of the summer. Um, students are then asked to submit the code. so the, uh, Google has their code, uh, Google Code website where you can submit the code, or there's other repositories where you can get that data, and then the project wraps up. Um, now, there is a bit of an incentive here. Uh, Google provides a stipend for the student, uh, and also the mentoring organization, uh, and also it gives out a cool t-shirt. Uh, this is just a snapshot from the previous years. Um, and as with this year, I got mine, and it's two sizes too big, so I can't wear it today. I'm instead wearing a slash dot t-shirt that I actually got at the Google Summer of Code Mentorship Summit. So that's my little plug for slash dot. Um, so the other incentive that mentors get in mentoring organizations is the Google Summer of Code Mentor Summit uh, held at Mountain View, the Google headquarters. Uh, they have an unconference. So those of you unfamiliar with an unconference is there's no schedule until you actually get there. So we decide what we're going to talk about. We put it up on some whiteboards, and then we argue about what we should really be talking about. Um, some interesting areas of discussion, some not so interesting. I found things like open government, open education, things that I don't necessarily think about were quite interesting sessions. But uh, you know, discussing and I should be careful here in case I get lynched, but the different licenses that occur, like GPL and you know, all these things, not fun. There's people throwing rocks at each other across the room. It's kind of, it's kind of entertaining in that perspective, but hellishly boring the others. Um, but you do get a great opportunity to meet a lot of other developers from other um, uh, open source software development. Um, as Brian was saying, it's a great opportunity to network uh, it is important to carry a business card there. Um, but, you know, there's some distractions at this meeting. It is Google and Mountain View, so you can grab a cycle. We've actually put brakes on them this year. I realized two years ago you had to backpedal the brake after I was going down the hill. I was a bit panicked. Uh, but <laughs> don't do that. Uh, but you can certainly interact with some versions of Android. This is the Android building. Each year they have a different... Uh, little caricature of the Android out there. Jelly Bean, I think, is the most recent. Um, you can eat lots of chocolate. Uh, this year wasn't so bad. Last year, there was about 300 pounds worth in weight of chocolate uh, from all around the world. Uh, and they had a lot of leftovers. And then you get to meet, and this is maybe not so clear, this is Marty. Uh, he's an he's a operations engineer at Google. Um, and he, you know, he's a great guy to meet. He likes, he's a, very, he's a musician. Um, and he's, you know, a super nice guy. He volunteers his time to talk with mentors and the other organizations and give advice uh, about all things open source. So it's great to meet him. So some of the lessons learned in the last couple of minutes. Um, Google Summer of Code is a relatively simple project to administer. Everything that I've just talked about is done online. There's no paperwork. There's no hassle like that. Um, Students that participate, I think, those that have a clear idea or thought about the problem or the idea in hand, or maybe knew a bit more about bioinformatics or had an interest, certainly when we were ranking them for participation, they did a lot better. Um, ten, 10 weeks is a short time to do software development. So creating and adhering to a schedule, I think students find some difficulty with that. 
and the mentors can do what they can to help them get through that end to the end point. Communication is absolutely critical. A lot of students are from different parts of the world, so having Skype and our IRC, it's vital. Not just a simple case of having email. You've got to be on top of them sometimes. Uh, students, though, do provide very good work. Uh, they make important contributions to the project. The success rate from Google Summer of Code on the evaluations is 88 to 90 percent over the last few years, so it's actually very good. Um, everybody benefits from this, and I think everybody can learn from it. And as well, the projects release all of that code worldwide. Okay, that's where I finish. Thank you.